trying to get footage of this, but it is a different setup on the inside and the outside. I don't know if you can see that, but it looks like there's a clip on the bottom and it's just held on at the top. This is one thing I like about Tesla. They keep innovating and they keep changing things. It's only one clip really that holds it in place. This one right down here, you push, you give it, a, it gives a little bit and the whole bottom comes out and then you can slide it off because it's hooked on by these two clips on the top and really just that one clip. Uh, that one kind of, possibly, but super easy. The other clips were so thin, they would break all the time. Any Tesla tech will tell you, those things break all the time. Uh, and then it's just a matter of unclipping these things. Pull that red thing back. Ooh, the red thing back all the way. Push the blue thing and it comes right out. So this you have to pull back all the way push on this blue piece that releases the clip. And then there you go, there is the housing. This is the housing for the camera. So the camera's right here, it's a, a lot better camera. Fender's the same, just the camera is just a little different. So what I've noticed is these version four cameras are pretty cool. You know how the back camera has always been like the uh, GoPro look where it's really uh, dynamic in colors. Well, now all the cameras are like that. I turn the car around in the driveway and I notice that all the cameras are like that now. So these are high def cameras. Remember when Tesla said that uh, you didn't need 4K video or really high res cameras for autopilot to work? Well, apparently they do. So I think it's really cool that they're actually upgrading these cameras and we're able to use that footage and hopefully they unlock more footage for or more cameras now for like sentry mode. And once you're done post heating, you wanna put the camera back on. There's actually two little dashes on either side here, but then there's this little extra thick one that goes right in the top piece. So basically this goes upside down. Well, actually, yeah, it goes upside down, clips in. Then this one catches on the one side. and then you just push it straight on. And it's on. It fits tighter than they did before, and uh, it goes on and off a lot easier. Good job, Tesla. Today's the start of another wrap on another white Model Y, but this is a really cool color. Voodoo Purple from APA or Evolve Film. It's the same company. Uh, I've got it all cut up over there, uh, but I'm gonna show you the process on what I do to get everything prepped, ready to go to wrap this car, which takes me five days with the ceramic coating included. But first, you gotta cut up the material because I'm in a three car garage. The car is uh, kind of angled, taking up all three spaces. So I, I don't have room to cut up in here because you know I live here, so there's my crap here too. But let me show you all the vinyl that I cut up first. So I have all the vinyl up over here rolled up and then labeled like vendors door front doors and but I have it all prepped ready to go uh, and maybe one day I'll show you how I cut up everything and how I have it labeled for each car this film is directional so you have to keep that in mind as you're cutting everything up but it's all right here this is all going to go on the car well not all of it there's some extra pieces for just in case but now it's time to go over the car first of all. I went over and documented all the scratches and all the chips and everything. They just picked this car up Friday and dropped it off to me yesterday, which was Sunday, and now I'm wrapping it. And I don't know if you can see on camera, Tesla's paint on their white cars is getting worse. The bumper is definitely yellow. I don't know if you can see it on the camera or on your monitor, but this is a different color for sure than the metal. I don't know why Tesla has such a problem painting plastic over metal it's just very very yellow and they they've had this issue since the beginning my 2018 model 3 the rear bumper was very very yellow almost as much as that front bumper and this bumper is yellow as well it's really hard to see tesla blames it on this is such a sharp curve here that this pearl is different but you can see it's right here the difference is dramatic and it's it's really bad, actually. Good thing they're getting it wrapped. In fact, I still have, well, actually, this is the better bumper. Um, this is my bumper off my Model 3. If anybody needs a bumper for a Model 3 and older, it was 2018, uh, I ended up keeping it. There was someone that rear-ended me and there was a, just a screw hole impression. It's not even really bad, but uh, I, I asked the body shop that replaced the bumper with a factory painted bumper. 
um, if I can just have that, I was going to put it up as art and, you know, if anybody needs that, let me know. And I do like the, uh, student drifter. Like I said, I'm going to go over everything I take apart and what I do for each panel, put it up on the lift and I'll let you know how long it takes me to do everything. I've already washed the car. It's, tw it's after lunch already and I'm going to get moving on this thing. I do have this car for over a week. He's going to pick it up. Today's Monday. He's going to pick it up next Monday or Tuesday. I can't remember. But uh, I saw, I'm going to take my time and make this really nice. So first things first, I've got this 50 pound line. I would get, if I was going to buy this again, I would get a little stronger line because sometimes this breaks. But this is just fishing line. I'm going to take some. I like to put some gloves on because it does dig into your hands a little bit. And I just wrap it around. They make tools for this too. But I just wrap it around my fingers. And then get underneath. And this car was sitting outside uh, drying all the way. So I do know that this is hot already. Otherwise I would have to use heat. Go in from each side here. Try not to go super fast because you're going to create a lot of heat and then that will rip it. The tape or the, the fishing line and then I'm going to saw back and forth. And then you do the same for the back ones. The next step after that is you take this. This is an eraser wheel. You can just take this and rub this off if you want to and with some alcohol even. And if it's warm enough, that might work, but that's a pain in the butt. It takes a long time. Set your drill to one, so it goes slower, and you just erase this without damaging the paint at all. It's kind of cool. Little bit of alcohol will get rid of the rest there's no scratches at all it also does help that those were stuck on just weeks ago so that was a plus so even if cars a few years old those that eraser wheel will get it off no problem next thing i like to do is take off these trim pieces but before i usually do that is i fold the seats down so i can put extra stuff in there and put these in there there's car seats back there i'm not messing with car seats at all so i'm not going to touch that so we're just going to for this, I'm going to open the door and you always start at this end and you kind of roll it towards the outside. Sometimes these are stuck on pretty good and other times not. All right, this is starting to move. Once you get it to go, turn the AC off. Actually, I'm going to put it in service mode. That way they don't get a, a bunch of notifications saying that the doors are open or they're unlocked. That's really helpful because for their end, they're not going to get all the notifications all week long when I leave a door open because sometimes I have to go do something. I leave a door open because I can't close it. Also, it's going to keep the air conditioning off. It's going to keep this from having too much power. It's only going to go, I think, eight miles an hour. Um, and it's not going to drain the battery as quickly. I do charge it up after I'm done wrapping the car for them, but um, that's a nice thing to do. Plus, they can't spy on you. Look in the cameras. <laughs> Anyway, let's get back to this. You're going to roll this forward and you're going to continue rolling it this way. You don't just want to lift up because you'll bend this. So you lift it up a little bit and you can feel it releasing as you just slowly go down, just pulling it up a little bit. It's just held on with friction right on here and it's nice and, well, it's not straight to begin with, but it's nice and curved and it just clamps right onto there. Put those up here for now. We're going to get to this in a second, but we need to take this one off as well. That helps just by rolling it forward. If you if you lift up too much, then it, I mean it can twist. It'll twist all day. But if you lift up too much, you'll bend it. Now it's time for the door panel to be removed, so we can remove the mirror here. And you take a pick tool, and there's a little uh, reflector on this end. You just go underneath it, pop off the reflector. It's just held on with clips. I put everything in the floorboard of this door and then you take a T30 and you get this screw out, this screw out, and this screw out. It's really easy. Once those three are taken off, I grab in the door pocket, 
kind of pry out. Sometimes it pops out. If not, you just go underneath this, kind of squeeze. Oh man, this one's on there pretty good. All right, let's try this side. All right, that's on there good. And you take a pry tool, if that's the case, and you just wedge in between there and it, you just pop it. Sounds like it breaks. You just need to one, one to pop first, get your hands underneath there. And then pop the rest. They are designed to pop like that and so and to reuse again. They're that's specifically designed that way. And then you lift up, and then I just slide it down a little bit so we can get to this. A little bit of tension from the speaker. We don't necessarily need to remove the speaker. Then you take a 10 millimeter. One bolt you see. So that's the one bolt I removed. You peel this back and there's a bolt right underneath this rubber thing. So there's a bolt right there and there's a bolt right behind here. You just pop this clip and then you just get to there. Underneath here, you just pull that and then you pop this little clip off and then the mirror comes right off. And, and I'll show you that once I get those out. You just grab this, kind of feed the cord through the rubber grommet just so there's less tension. And you're kind of lifting up and out at the same time. And now the mirror's out. With the water drain. Put that inside the car as well. And then you just slide the door panel over. I mean, you could disconnect everything on the door panel if you want to, but I don't. I just put it back into place. Line up, line up where those holes are. Just clip two of them and move on to the next door. Take that back. Before we move on, this bolt right here, I don't know if you can see that, that bolt right there, that controls the fender in and out right here. So I'm gonna loosen that up. We don't wanna open up the door all the way. We want it the first notch. That way we can get a long extension in there. Just loosen it so we can pull this away from here so we can tuck in this better so we see less white. What I then do now is pop this little gasket thing. You need the same tool here, but you just pop the little clip. And it's hard to explain. You gotta pop the both of them, the bottom and the top. Then we're just gonna... If you look at this, now I can wrap this area and trim along here. And here, this, once I'm done wrapping, I'll put this over top of it and it'll kind of hide everything in there. This might give you a better look at it. It's a lot easier to do once we have this panel released. And it actually pushes the panel out to making this fender easier to wrap and this easier to wrap. We don't have to wedge something in there to keep it out. So now to the back, we're gonna take out these and of course the license plate. We've already taken off the trim pieces or the logos, I should say. And this is what I do before I put it up on the lift. Now you don't have to lift a car to wrap it. This is something I do so I can get in there easier. Get It brings it up higher because I'm six foot five. Um, so it makes it easier for me. I take these off, but I'm not taking these off. I don't need to because there's a giant gap here. And you know, I take that back. I might remove it because usually there's a gap here. Uh, I might end up taking these off. This one has a bigger gap, you know, it's within Tesla spec. Um, maybe I'll take these off as well. Not positive yet, but I definitely are taking these off so I can tuck inside these and of course the license plate. So I just removed the license plate and the plastic piece. I am going to loosen this up and take these out as well later on. They just, there's just clips holding those in uh, just so I can wrap this so there's less white. Um, but to remove, the tail lights, you have to drop this down. And it starts with this piece up front here. And drop this down. There we go. That just pops right down. It's just clips holding everything on. This whole car is put together with clips. And then inside here are these little push pins. These little push pins here, these are actually large ones. 
I removed those so then when I drop this thing, it's just all one piece. So you just get a, a tool to pry down. And it's designed to do this. And then I unclip this. And sometimes little brackets come off. They're designed to go right back on. All right. Now for the tool. Get up in the middle and pry the middle. There we go. And that drops that. Super easy. Now, any clips that came off, I just leave right back here because I know where, they, where they're supposed to be. I'll put it back on when I put everything together. Now, right up in here is the tail light. There's one eight millimeter bolt and then the connection for each side. You just pull the red tab down, unclip it, unbolt that. Then you take a plastic pry tool in between, pop it up. It's just these little clips here that get pushed into rubber grommets. And that's the light. And you know what I just noticed? This is a third row seat. I've never been in a third row seat. I'm kind of in. <laughs> I, I had to take my shoes off just because my feet didn't fit underneath this. I couldn't, I didn't want to remove the car seats again. I, I moved the seat far enough that it, that it would go. So there's no way a six foot five person, I don't even think anybody could fit back here. I don't even think their kids could fit back here. This would be very, very tight. I can't even latch the seat. Maybe if I, if I scoot back all the way. Oh, there it does, it does latch. All right, I'm in. Just remove the glass and I can ride back here. Just don't hit the brake hard, because that'll hurt. All right, now I gotta figure out how to get out of here. Oh, the seat moves forward? Are you serious? Are you serious? I didn't know it did that. Damn. Well, now I got room. I mean, I don't have a headroom, but I didn't know it did that. There's actually, okay. I take it all back. There's enough room for a kid back here to get back here. I don't know once this thing closes. Pretty funky. All right, I'm getting out of here. This is crazy. Now I take the trim piece off. I like to open the door, grab underneath it, and just pull. And at the very bottom, you just lift up a little bit. These things are designed to come off that way. If one of these clips gets left in here, which Tesla didn't add one. Sometimes they come off of here. They just slide in and out. And then this bolt right here is an eight millimeter. This is what holds the fender on. So I'll be able to pull that out so I can wrap inside there and then wrap in there for the bumper. And I'll actually release all of it. Oh, of course this is an optional step I think is necessary for me. I lift the car. It's not too high off the ground, but it gives me great access to Again, I'm 6'5". I'm 6'5", and it's pretty much at my armpit. So perfect height when I'm sitting down on my stool. I can wrap this whole door. I don't have to climb on the ground all the time. It's so nice. Another nice thing is I'm going to take out the front because I'm taking off the front bumper next. But I noticed some Mountain Pass Performance parts. It looks like you want to be nosy, but he's putting in a lift kit on this. This is really cool. Putting in a lift kit and then there's some camber arms here so this is going to give it an inch and a half lift it's going to look like this all the time no, that's way too high but it's going to be inch and a half taller than stock which is going to be really cool hopefully get some off-road tires and with this purple color it's going to be kind of cool
You got a disconnect right here. And the bumper's free. And then it's just a bolt here. And a bolt here. Headlight comes right out. Now you're ready to wrap. So that is what I do to prep pretty much every car, even a black on black car, if I'm doing a black to a, a, a matte black or something like that, I will prep it quite a bit like this. So it makes just for a better, better wrap. And that's what I'm all about is making a better wrap. So I do still have to take this off, but I'm gonna take a break right now, get a little snack and then come out and start wrapping as much as I can today. Cause it's two o'clock already and I need to start wrapping some stuff. But first I gotta wipe down a bunch of things. So I'm probably gonna do the doors first, then move to the fenders and uh, see how much I get done today. I can work tomorrow. Even though it's the 4th of July, I may uh, maybe working on it.